Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this webinar, uh, fifth webinar of this series. And today we're going to talk about the gut health benefit of copper in uh, broiler production. Narendra van Catanetti will be your um, presenter for today. My name is Chantal van Lin. I'm going to be your host. Um, just a few things before we start. Um, we are more than happy to answer all the questions that you have, but please. Um, Ask them via the panel that you have in your GoToWebinar tool, so we can see them come in, and we can address them in the Q&A session after Narendra is uh, ready with this presentation. Um, this webinar will be recorded, and uh, the handouts and the recordings will be available on request after this webinar. Uh, just a few uh, disclaimers uh, before we get started. Um, just notice that this webinar is uh, very generic. So the information that we provide uh, can differ from your own local situation. So before you use any of the information here or when you have questions, please uh, address them to your local uh, sales representative. Uh, so with no further ado, I'm going to save the floor to, uh, to Narendra. Hello, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. A warm welcome to everyone for today's webinar. Hope everyone is uh, safe and healthy uh, during these strange uh, times. Uh, my name is uh, Narendra Venkatreddy and uh, I'm the global uh, product manager for uh, Trace Mineral Portfolio. I think uh, last two weeks uh, back, uh, my colleague Alice Ebert has uh, uh, talked about uh, eye levels in grower finisher. So today we are going to talk about uh, gut health benefit uh, in the broiler uh, production by using copper eye levels. So today agenda, uh, it's uh, full. Uh, as you can see here, we are going to talk about uh, uh, antibiotics resistance risk and uh, feed form health approach. Not all trace minerals are created equal. Uh, eye copper level, and its effects and application and results with eye levels of copper. And there is some published literature I'm going to show you. And uh, I'm going to give final conclusion remarks uh, at, at the end. So, Uh, when we're talking about uh, antibiotic uh, resistance risk, uh, according to WHO prediction by 2050, uh, uh, there is more people will die by common bacterial infection uh, that is resistant to antibiotic than they will die due to cancer. So at present, if you look at uh, cancer is number one cause of death in humans. Uh, this is, um, I think, very relevant uh, uh, for us uh, for next three decades. Uh, and also, uh, I think at present, if you look at the COVID situation, uh, we have seen how much health is important. And uh, as a global uh, concern about the human threat, health threat is posed by antimicrobial resistance uh, continues to rise. The governments continue to introduce a le legislations to curb antibiotic use in animal agriculture. And also you can see that consumers are becoming uh, more, more and more aware. So it is becoming uh, emerging uh, uh, human health risk. So which is, we are all should aware of that. And we also see that uh, there, is a, uh, there is a study which shows that uh, from 2010 to 2030, you can see there is 67% uh, uh, increase uh, in the use of antibiotics in livestock uh, farming. And also there is some study says that there is 80% of the antibiotics used in the feed at uh, these MG, uh, like in swine, 172 MG uh, per kg of animal produced and broilers or poultry, we can say 150 MG uh, of uh, uh, per kg of animal produced and 45 MG in and dairy or beef uh, cattle. So uh, we need to have uh, strategies. Uh, so we need to develop the strategies uh, to reduce the use of antibiotics, both in um, humans and animals. So uh, from trow nutrition, uh, what we are doing is a complete AMR, uh, which is antimicrobial reduction uh, program. Uh, we are uh, uh, introduced, it's an integrated approach. It's very crucial 
uh, for form, uh, feed, and health uh, management. So as you can see, there is a, uh, all these uh, managements. Uh, it's, it should be a holistic approach. And especially uh, in this webinar, we are going to talk key more importance on the feed reduce uh, part from health management side. So as I talked, uh, Trow Nutrition is uh, following uh, integrated uh, uh, feed form uh, health approach uh, because uh, to sustainably improve poultry performance or reduce uh, the need for antibiotics, we have to take many factors into account like raw material management, feed safety, biosecurity, hygiene, uh, water quality and health management. So there are different things we need to look at it and um, uh, looking at a particular uh, uh, situation uh, per customer, uh, so uh, we, we design uh, customized solutions in your way to reach uh, your goals. So uh, as a Trow Nutrition, we have a rich network of uh, global and local specialists that can help you to optimize the production system at each level. So when we are talking about health management specifically, uh, we have different solutions at Trow Nutrition. Uh, one is... Uh, I, I can say intelibonsi or hydroxy uh, trace minerals, uh, which especially today, uh, it is very relevant for today's topic, which is uh, intelibond copper. And uh, we have other solutions also for gut health, which is Selco pH, which is applied through water and uh, Prezan uh, FY, uh, which is a, also a organic acid and it's a product available uh, across the globe. And also we have salicid, uh, other product. So, and we have other uh, uh, services also, uh, which you can contact our uh, uh, sales and technical people at your upcoast or countries. So depending on uh, regulation, uh, uh, if high levels of copper is not allowed, uh, there is, you can use uh, nutrition levels of intelibond copper or hydroxy uh, copper. So which is uh, along with that, you can use Selco pH and Prezan F5. And depending on objectives and situation of the customer, uh, we can recommend uh, the right uh, uh, combination of uh, AMR program. Uh, today, uh, we talked about uh, today's importance is on copper level. So uh, especially uh, when we talk about copper, copper uh, is a trace mineral. Uh, which we all know, like unlike uh, like other minerals like zinc, copper, manganese, iron, iodine, selenium, all these are trace minerals. So this copper is also uh, a trace mineral. So we use the copper uh, in two uh, different ways. One is at the nutrition levels, other one is at the uh, eye levels. So nutrition levels are fed to the animals to get metal into the bloodstream of the animal in order to available physiologically within animal to drive uh, their processes. When we are talking about higher use levels, we are talking about around 125 to 250 uh, ppm levels in broilers, turkeys, uh, et cetera. Uh, these levels are significantly higher uh, compared to nutrition levels uh, by the factor of around 10 to 12. So, the, so our objective is not here to get uh, metal into the bloodstream, but uh, we're feeding these levels uh, uh, to reach the metal into the distal end of the intestinal tract, wherein it is available to interact with the microbiota in order to create a different uh, environment which facilitates overall well being of the animal. So, if we do that well, we can see improvement in the feed efficiency, growth rate, uh, gut integrity, and health. So, uh, now we are going to a little bit uh, cover uh, why uh, copper and uh, what is the significance of copper. So as you can see here, uh, copper can limit microbial growth. So you may be thinking, oh, so there are, uh, I just wanted to pop this, uh, some of the new spits. Uh, there is nothing novel about copper effect on the various types of pathogens. Uh, These new, new spits you can see here, the, cop, cop, the bacteria fighting super element that's uh, making come back in the hospital, uh, so copper. So that means like if you look at uh, the copper uh, in hospitals, especially in the door handles and all, they use copper because it's of antimicrobial properties. And also there is some other new spades, Superbug Marsa has no chance against copper. There are other new spades, Dr. Uh, copper tons, uh, a bug killer as hospitals in 
um, boosting demand. So there are a lot of news bits like this, uh, like this. but our industry started recognizing uh, the copper again with its uh, interesting uh, characteristics in terms of uh, controlling uh, dangerous pathogens. For example, if you look at uh, the uh, cow ear, uh, which is our uh, dairy cattle in the uh, dairy farms where you can see the footpath, uh, where they use the copper sulfate because of its anti-microbial properties. So this is uh, very uh, clearly visible. So we can see we can say that the harmful pathogens are everywhere. It is important uh, to do everything to protect uh, animals. Coming to nutritional uh, levels, uh, we already uh, talked about that. Nutrition levels are used to meet the physiological and metabolical de demands of the animal. And the feeding nutrition levels of copper uh, will provide, uh, you can say, zero or no effect on on the animal on my antimicrobial uh, properties, especially in the intestinal uh, tract I'm talking about. So let's see some of the, uh, when you feed uh, copper at the nutrition levels, uh, they have some vital functions uh, contributing to health and well-being of the animal. So several of uh, copper dependent enzymes play important role in antioxidant defense of the body. So, which will improve the health status of the animal. For example, if you take superoxide dismutase, cytochrome C, this will help in antioxidant uh, defense. And also, a copper also works uh, within macrophages to combat uh, uh, certain infectious agents. So, if macrophages are working better, so you can have a better immune response in case of any disease challenges. Formation of collagen and elastin. So this is also one of the key function of copper. Normal air and the skin pigmentation. So uh, especially uh, uh, if you look here, it, it plays important role uh, in melanin formation. And also it helps, uh, copper helps in uh, uh, functioning of uh, nervous system, especially it facilitates a myelin production, which is very important for nervous system. And also it plays very important role in iron metabolism. Uh, I, I think we all should remember that not all the trace minerals are created equal. So there are different uh, forms of uh, or sources of trace minerals are there in the market. Let's look at a little bit uh, list history about uh, the trace minerals just to get aware of uh, how, how this works. A uh, little history uh, in use of trace mineral sources here, as you can see, uh, trace mineral uh, supplementation uh, started with oxide forms in around the uh, 1900s and uh, moved to more a little more better bioavailable uh, uh, sulfate forms in around 1940s. Uh, during Second World War time, uh, there was sufficient material of uh, this uh, uh, sulfates were available. So then uh, some of the feed producers started uh, using that from that time and around 1970s, uh, uh, some universities started uh, uh, testing these uh, materials and they found uh, they have a lot of antagonistic uh, effect because of their reactive nature. Uh, so that is uh, uh, the reason then they, they, they started reducing usage of sulfates and later some companies uh, uh, came forward uh, uh, to work on a, a new, uh, uh, maybe new kind of a trace mineral that's called organic trace minerals, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, started from 1970s, and then uh, then these trace minerals uh, were started using by uh, many customers, uh, which they could see a lot of improved results. But uh, major uh, uh, feed, I mean, ma major uh, drawback of that is. Uh, is is uh, having low metal concentration and also has a higher cost uh, when you're using uh, organic trace minerals. But again, uh, if you look at uh, later in 1990s, uh, uh, there are a couple of researchers uh, researchers in US started working a new category uh, to come up with a cost effective uh, 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 product uh, which can meet the uh, the needs of the customer. Uh, especially a better biology product. So then they found uh, uh, in 1995, uh, the hydroxy trace mineral, uh, so which is named as IntelliBond and uh, 
1996 onwards uh, this product uh, came into the market so this is uh, this is a new technology in the industry and a new category um, uh, to improve essential nutrient stability in the feeds and optimize animal performance requiring additional trace mineral uh, absorption this has a uh, high metal concentration uh, and also which has uh, very good efficacy uh, and uh, better bioavailability Uh, coming to trace mineral sources, uh, feed stability part. Uh, I just wanted to quickly touch upon this. On uh, uh, this is a study done uh, to examine the retention of vitamins in the feed or premix uh, based on uh, what type of trace minerals uh, were included here. If you look at it, uh, it's uh, uh, chelated or organic trace mineral, oxide, sulfate, and uh, free metal. So as you can see here, uh, when 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 uh, we uh, give uh, chelated trace minerals, uh, you can see a least drop in the vitamin levels. And also same with the oxides, there is a least drop in the vitamin levels and the premixes. And again, uh, when you uh, provide it with sulfate, you can see a, a significant drop uh, uh, in the uh, 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 sulfates. And also if you see uh, pre, pre metals, there is also a significant drop in the vitamins. So as all the vitamins you can see vitamin a vitamin e k and thiamine all these vitamins you can see significant uh, drop when you use sulfate forms and uh, we also uh, tested uh, uh, with uh, here with the intellibonds uh, especially this is a study to done to examine the stability of vitamin in the feed supplemented with uh, one group is control group where no trace mineral is used and the other groups is a uh, 200 ppm of uh, uh, copper sulfate and 200 ppm of intelli bond is used. Look at this, uh, where in the control, there is no much uh, drop in the vitamin E levels in the feed. And uh, when you use sulfate forms, where you can see a significant drop uh, in the vitamin E levels, where uh, you can say that uh, it is around 24% uh, uh, drop in the uh, first 10 days, and it is 69% drop in the 41 days. And uh, when we uh, feed, uh, when we supplement that with uh, hydroxy uh, trace mineral, where you can see that uh, uh, it is, uh, you can see there is no drop, which is almost equivalent to control uh, group here. So here also, when we compare that, it is almost uh, interle uh, interlebond or hydroxy trace uh, mineral, which has uh, three times more uh, uh, better retention of vitamin E. And uh, also, if you look at uh, this one, when uh, these diets are fed here, uh, vitamin E levels also uh, recovered in the blood plasma, uh, which was 11% uh, higher for the birds eating uh, feeds with interleibond uh, copper, uh, directly showing increased uh, vitamin E availability from the diets uh, containing interleibond copper here. Uh, Again, uh, this is uh, also in addition to vitamin E retention, uh, copper source uh, can alter how uh, added enzymes like uh, phytase function in the diets. Phytate is, a, I think we all know that phytate is a key sub substrate uh, uh, for the activity of uh, uh, phytase, which has a high affinity for trace minerals. So reactive sources of trace minerals like sulfates can bind to the molecule easily, uh, which can block the effect of phytase enzyme. So here, this study uh, is uh, done to examine the interaction between supplemental copper uh, and uh, phytase uh, in the feeds. So the researchers uh, looked at uh, use of uh, copper citrate, copper chloride, copper lysine, copper sulfate, and hydroxy uh, trace mineral, especially in telebonds here. So these are uh, 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 tested at uh, different concentration levels, uh, 0 ppm, 62.5, 125 ppm, 250 ppm, and 500 ppm levels. So here, what happened is uh, there, um, uh, example, if you take copper citrate, uh, there is a relative uh, phosphorus release is very high when you increase uh, the copper, concent uh, copper concentration here. So you can see a decrease uh, in the uh, phosphorus uh, release. And also on the copper chloride, also you can see as you increase uh, the release of 
copper chloride is uh, as uh, inhibited the phosphorus release here and also in sulfates you can see also significantly the 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 phosphorus release is impacted when you increase the concentration but in the organic one uh, especially copper lysine you can see uh, there is uh, uh, not uh, too much impact on that and also with the interleukin c there is no too much impact on the uh, relative phosphorus release so copper inhibits the efficacy of phytase higher concentrations cause more inhibition improved sources of copper prevent this due to the their lower release of free metal ions uh, this is something also we need to look it all started with an observation uh, where uh, control uh, uh, you can see this control one uh, was uh, made up of uh, you can say inorganic plus organic uh, combination where you can see a lot of uh, uh, clumping Uh, and also its reactive and premix quality is uh, very poor uh, so this is uh, especially in hot and humid conditions it will have more impact combination this one uh, here if you look at your inorganic organic and hydroxy trace minerals are used but again you can see still uh, lumping uh, and physical properties are not that great here and if you you if you look at it only interle bonds are mixed which is very uh having very good physical properties which is very uniform and you can see look at the physical properties of that it's very nice so let's uh look at uh, hydroxy trace mineral which we launched uh, as interle bond c so technology in every particle so it's very interesting right look at the each particle Uh, it is it is very interesting uh, physical and chemical characteristics with unique uh, very unique chemistry uh, and uh, which has a uh, uh, covalent bond similar to uh, organic trace minerals so uh, it has fully defined uh, naturally occurring crystals which are uh, especially we call uh, these crystals are uh, made within the opticized particle we call this as each particle is opticized particle because many crystals are there in that which will be around 150 to 300 micron size so uh, this is this is a, a very uni highly uniform spheres and non hygroscopic uh, essentially dust free and it doesn't react with uh, uh, any other uh, uh, anti nutritional factors or antagonists and it has uniform blending which we have seen in our previous slide how, and the physical uh, properties of the product so again uh, if you look at uh, now the important topic of today's uh, interest is on uh, high levels of copper uh, and its effects in the broiler production uh, i'm going to uh, split this into two uh, parts one is uh, in vitro data other one is uh, in vivo data so before that i just wanted to also give that some perspective on high level uh, copper effects how it works and why it works so we all know that uh, in the my uh, beginning of my presentation where i show the copper slide uh, copper is a very strong antimicrobial agent so copper has uh, as a negative effect for even uh, both gram positive and gram negative uh, uh, bacteria it's something like acts like a shotgun or hammer when we use copper it it will knock down uh, the entire uh, uh, microbial population so uh, but you need to Uh, use at different uh, concentrations for that uh, when uh, when when uh, we are uh, reducing this uh, this uh, uh, bacteria especially if you talk about uh, uh, clostridium salmonella total uh, anaerobic anaerobic bacteria coliform populations in the small intestine and cecum of the broiler so uh, this bacteria when you reduce uh, degrade uh, or uh, no uh, reduce this microbial populations the nutrients especially Uh, which uh, will be consumed by these pop, uh, bacteria will be available uh, once we reduce this bacterial population for the animal to consume so that the, those nutrients utilized by the animal uh, to get better performance so which will result in better growth and feed efficiency and uh, this is uh, one of the in vitro data which i would like to show here in this slide it's a we it's a classing study uh, where uh, this graphic uh, clearly points out uh, uh, antimicrobial effects are providing increasing uh, high concentrations of copper uh, for four uh, well known 
pathogens, uh, especially I can say two from Salmonella, Salmonella enteritis, Salmonella gallinarium, and one is E. coli and Clostridium perfringentia. So here, uh, please note that uh, the antimicrobial effect highlighted uh, in this graphic uh, is driven by uh, overall concentration uh, of copper present. So you need to have a certain amount of copper uh, required to uh, reduce a microbiota. So if you look at this here, 100 uh, ppm levels, uh, there is no effect. So it is not until approximately a 200 ppm of concentration of copper in the media. Uh, as you can see, there is, you can see slight um, uh, reduction, uh, you can see uh, in different species of bacteria. So when you uh, use at 600 concentration levels, uh, there is a significant impact uh, on the microbial uh, growth rate, especially from 400 to 600 levels, if you can see a significant uh, drop in the microbial growth rate. So you, you may be thinking that, should, should I use these high levels uh, to have this kind of impact? No, I'll tell you why in my next slide. Here, if you look at this, is another uh, study, uh, classing study we, uh, in the birds, which were uh, here. What we did is uh, we fed uh, 150 ppm of uh, interleaved copper hydroxy uh, copper. So uh, uh, after that, uh, 21 days, uh, we collected samples uh, from different uh, parts of the intestinal tract, uh, as you can see here, from duodenum, jejunum, ileum, and cecum. And uh, as you can see, a starch and protein uh, are absorbed. Uh, copper becomes more and uh, more uh, concentrated uh, as it travels uh, in the intestinal uh, tract. I think uh, this is uh, one more thing I would like to highlight. Uh, internally bonded hydroxy trace mineral is very stable above 4 pH. Uh, so as it uh, 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 goes uh, towards the distal end of the intestine, the concentration is going to get increased in the digester. As we fed here 150 ppm, as you can see, the concentration is getting increased. For example, uh, we are feeding that 150 ppm, and uh, you can see the year 375 ppm in the lower cut. So, which is equivalent to, for example, if you feed in diet one ppm in the diet, so which will be equivalent to 2.5 times in the lower J tract. So, as you've seen in my previous slide, to get 600 ppm, where you almost nil. Uh, pathogenic bacteria, so you need to feed around 240 ppm in the feed. So, so let's uh, see how it works uh, uh, when we combine both in vitro and in vivo data. So here, if you look at the, uh, uh, especially uh, I can show you the red lines here, uh, which you can see here. Um, uh, here, the red lines show the impact of feeding a specific level of interleaved and microbial populations. So remember the my previous slide and the concentration effect of uh, 2.5. So if you look at this 10 ppm uh, nutrition levels, or you can say uh, there no effect. You can see there is very little effect or no effect uh, on uh, on, the, on the microbial population. So when uh, uh, as uh, we talked about 125 ppm levels, which is 2.5 times of that, so you can see that uh, there is significant reduction in the microbial population. And again, at 150, you can see more reduction uh, of microbial growth, and uh, 250 ppm, which is uh, uh, which is almost equal into you can say 600 ppm uh, in the in vitro study. So this is how it works in both in vitro and in vivo, where, where it has a, a equivalence of uh, you can say uh, 2.5 uh, times when you feed one ppm in the diet. Uh, this is also another uh, uh, study where uh, the, here you can see the uh, uh, there are four replicates. Uh, you can say three replicates used uh, here. The birds were sacrificed at the age of uh, two weeks, and digester was taken from uh, upper ileum uh, by using uh, by collected using a sterile uh, uh, technique and frozen techniques. Um, here, uh, if you look at uh, in zero uh, 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 copper and copper sulfate, uh, we Added at 150 ppm, and uh, uh, again, hydroxy copper or interleaved copper is used uh, uh, at 150 ppm here. So you can see E. coli and the Clostridium uh, levels uh, here almost an uh, uh, interleaved one. Uh, it's almost you can say 
a 69% reduction and uh, here clostridium it is around 22% uh, reduction so what does it mean uh, for the animal so less pathogenic bacteria means so less bacteria to steal uh, nutrients so which means better performance so let's look at one more data on this so here actually especially when you look at uh, this data so i copper can improve the protein and digestibility so here you can see 4% uh, improvement in the digestibility uh, from when increase from 135 ppm to uh, 270 uh, ppm uh, with hydroxy copper so again uh, if you look uh, this is uh, not a direct uh, uh, effect it is uh, mainly as i told it's an indirect effect uh, 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 because low bacteria means uh, the gut uh, in the means uh, the bacteria are consuming less nutrients resulting better gain and uh, improvement especially by utilizing amino acids and all and even if you look at the vitamin e levels uh, the vitamin e levels also uh, you can see a, a, a significant uh, improvement in the vitamin e levels uh, when we uh, give uh, intelibond c at a different concentration uh, compared to sulfates so there is better uh, vitamin e levels in the liver Uh, now, this is very important uh, when it comes to application. Uh, we need to look at the application at different conditions. I made into four segments uh, in the applications here. Uh, one is intelibond copper comparing with copper sulfate, intelibond copper uh, comparing with AGPR, uh, uh, especially we have taken BMDR, intelibond copper during necrotic enteritis challenge, and especially intelibond during uh, its stress conditions. So let's see in each uh, application, how does uh, uh, this hydroxy copper work? So, uh, I mean, I talked about uh, the previous uh, slides on the copper. So maybe many of the many of you may be thinking that uh, can I use uh, uh, copper sulfate? So in that case, like copper uh, is is uh, having a good effect, antimicrobial properties. Can I use that? So. Yes, you can use it, it's very cheap, but it costs your company. I think, uh, why? Because it's too reactive, uh, as you can see here. Uh, even at the physical properties of that is not that uh, uh, good. And also it has, uh, as I talked about, reactive nature. So it also interacts with antagonists, uh, especially in the gut uh, and also in the feed. And uh, especially in the broiler diets, if you talk, we make a pellet diet feeds where in, even it comes uh, exposure to uh, uh, moisture, especially uh, even in the in the conditioning stage. So it, it interacts there and it has antagonism and also oxidation with the fats. Uh, so you can see phytate, fats, vitamins, all these have a antagonistic nature. And it also has a less uh, tolerance uh, whenever you increase the copper sulfate uh, lower feed intake will be there. So let's look at that, um, uh, some of the data, how it uh, looks like when we compare uh, hydroxy copper with uh, copper sulfate. So this is one uh, data here. Uh, the idea here is to show the impact of uh, body weight and feed intake uh, with, uh, in uh, both the uh, two studies you can see here. Um, uh, when we are feeding uh, copper uh, from copper sulfate and also hydroxy uh, copper. So as you increase the level uh, coming from sulfate uh, above 100 ppm, uh, you can see here uh, will start to affect the body weight and also uh, feed intake. So in both the trials, you can see as you increase from 100 ppm, uh, you can see significant uh, drop in the feed intake uh, and also body weight. So this is uh, shows that uh, copper sulfate has less tolerance lever and intelibond C has high tolerance levels. Uh, this is another uh, study. I'm sorry. Can you see? Oh. Um, this is another study. I, uh, I hope, uh, Shantal, can you see my screen? There is something looks like. Yes, I can okay. see a screen. Okay, good. Um, here, uh, uh, you can see this one as, uh, uh, yeah. 
Now, uh, uh, in this one, we are comparing IntelliBond C with copper sulfate at the 125 ppm levels, uh, where uh, uh, you can see that there is uh, different locations uh, mentioned, key, uh, research locations, and also uh, there is different uh, ages, especially, uh, which is an average uh, 36 days uh, from average of uh, seven studies. And also, you've seen the body weight improvement of uh, uh, 0.084 uh, pound uh, uh, on average of from all the studies uh, compared to copper sulfate when we are using IntelliBond at 125 ppm levels. And also, you can see there is an average uh, 4.7 points improvement uh, in the FCR uh, compared to copper sulfate. So this uh, shows that, uh, no, uh, yeah, it has direct uh, evidence that replacing uh, 125 ppm of copper from copper sulfate with copper from IntelliBond C results in aviate birds and better FCR. So IntelliBond C outperforms copper sulfate in all the trials. Uh, very little up upfront uh, cost. I can say uh, it is around three, uh, just $3 cents per bird uh, will be the cost and uh, it will have a, a return on investment of around, I can say six to seven uh, uh, return on investment, one is to seven or one is to six based on these results. So again, uh, here uh, we can talk about uh, uh, now uh, we talked about copper sulfate. Now we can talk about uh, IntelliBond C uh, versus uh, AGP, uh, especially in BMD. Uh, in this study, we have 10 replications and uh, we have uh, uh, 48 uh, chicks per pen and uh, uh, 49 days trial were conducted, around 4,800 birds were there. So phytase uh, was used, xylanase was included in this trial, and uh, the birds used are Ross 708 males, built up litter, all chicks were vaccinated with coccidiosis vaccine at the hatchery. So performance measured at 14 uh, days and 28 days, 42 days, and 49 days. So, and uh, you can see different uh, concentration levels. I'm going to express, uh, explain that in the next slide where uh, uh, different uh, uh, treatments, there are, you can see uh, 10 programs so we uh, made here in the table on the left side, where you can see uh, there is a uh, one group here, which uh, treatment one has uh, no antibiotic or no AGP and uh, treatment uh, six has uh, used AGP. Let's compare that uh, here. So when you compare treatment one, there is uh, uh, no BMD. And uh, as I talked about treatment six, there is a BMD is used at 50 grams. Then you look at the body weight here, there is significant uh, improvement of the, uh, as, as we all know that it works, BMD works. So it, it, it is showing its job. Uh, and uh, let's now compare uh, different uh, uh, treatments now, especially here, uh, yeah. Uh, here in the treatment two, as you can see, we used uh, 125 ppm of uh, copper at uh, uh, different phases, uh, especially up to uh, uh, 42 uh, to 47 days. So, and again in the uh, treatment three, uh, we have used up to 42 days because some customers uh, told that they want to uh, they want to uh, have withdrawal feed, so they reduced it. And again, uh, on, on uh, treatment five, uh, if you can look at it, uh, it is, uh, uh, we have used a graded program where 200 ppm and uh, up to 14 days and uh, 14 to 28 days, uh, we use 150 ppm and uh, uh, again, 125 rest of the uh, life. So here, uh, what again we compare next program is, uh, we compare, the objective of this study is mainly to compare the uh, AGP versus uh, the IntelliBond copper. So where you can see a significant improvement uh, in the graded program, especially when in, uh, I use IntelliBond copper at graded program uh, compared to uh, AGP or BMD. So again, uh, let's, uh, some of the customers uh, want to combine uh, copper with uh, AGPs. Let's see how uh, it has additive effect or not. So let's compare uh, treatment uh, six and uh, treatment uh, 10 a year. So here uh, we have uh, AGP also, we have graded program also. Uh, so here you can see there is a significant improvement in the uh, uh, body weight compared to only AGP used. 
So it clearly shows that uh, uh, the copper, especially hydroxy copper, is showing a significant uh, uh, better performance compared to AGP uh, when used separately as a graded program and also when we combine with AGP uh, comparing with uh, uh, only AGP. This is only, uh, we talked about body weights. Now we, we also look uh, that into uh, the FCRs. So FCRs also, you can see here, uh, it also goes same way. As you can see, adding BMD reduced FCR in the diets with no uh, IBC. So there is a uh, improvement uh, in, uh, in the treatment six we can see here. And also graded uh, IBC, next one, as you can see here, uh, comparing graded IBC, no uh, BMD uh, and uh, eight points uh, lower FCR than BMD on no IBC. So there is eight points improvement compared to uh, uh, AGP program here. So this also shows a significant ROI. And again, uh, if you look at it, uh, there is a 11 points improvement uh, when we combine AGP and the graded program. So this is also a significant uh, improvement compared to only AGP. So this shows us, you know, this product is, uh, you know, working very effectively um, in the, uh, especially replacing uh, AGPs. And uh, again, IBC during uh, any challenge, uh, when you look at the uh, year, uh, our standard program is around 125 pp uh, ppm, but, uh, but whenever the challenging conditions, we increase here, as you can see, 200 ppm and 275 ppms were uh, done in our most these are six trials, as you can research trials, and uh, these are challenges uh, studies where we can see uh, COXI challenge uh, or COXI vaccine was done in uh, uh, day zero, and uh, cross training for fringes challenge was done in uh, uh, day 17 here in, uh, in most of the studies here. And the treatment was given around uh, uh, 200 to 275 uh, uh, interleubed uh, copper levels. So uh, then uh, we see uh, there is an improvement in the body weight, an average of uh, 0.221 uh, pound, and uh, again, uh, 2.6 uh, points improvement in the FCRs. And also you can see lesion scores were uh, 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 reduced, and also mortality is uh, reduced here. So six trials were feeding interleubed copper improved performance during necrotic enteritis challenge. If we are body weights, you have seen lower FCR, less lesions, lower mortality. Interleubed copper at high levels is a very effective non-antibiotic tool to combat necrotic enteritis. This is another condition, uh, especially during each stress conditions. Uh, here, uh, what we did is uh, we have given interleubed um, uh, here uh, at nutrition levels of uh, uh, zinc and manganese and the graded level, graded level means like 200 ppm of uh, uh, copper from uh, hydroxy copper and from day one to day 14, 150 ppm from day 15 to 28, 125 ppm from 29 to 42 days. And here in the treatment too, we use at nutrition levels, all the trace minerals, including copper at 15. And treatment three, we have used graded levels of copper sulfate, same levels of 200 ppm uh, and 150 ppm and 125 ppm. And we use the uh, same nutrition levels in treatment four. You can see in the graded ones, there is significant improvement in the FCR uh, levels uh, compared to uh, sulfate forms. So during stress conditions also, uh, using uh, high levels will help. So these are uh, some quotes from published literature. I just wanted to, uh, uh, read out uh, maybe one or two year, uh, just it is all there in the public domain. Uh, so one one year one uh, quote says that increasing copper from uh, 5 ppm to 200 ppm in the form of interleubed C improved growth promotion. Other study uh, or published literature says that dietary copper supplementation may allow for more consistent growth and performance of birds grown on fresh or recycled litter as compared with antibiotic supplementation. So there are a lot more studies are published, so which are all there in public domain. If you want to refer, so these are available to you. So finally, I want to conclude uh, this presentation uh, with a take home message. Uh, we all seen that uh, IntelliBond Copper has uh, proven its efficacy in both in vitro and in vivo trials. IntelliBond Copper, uh, versus copper sulfate 
yeah, copper sulfate is cheap, but uh, it costs uh, your company in telebond C uh, outperforms copper sulfate in all the trials consistently with good economic return. In telebond copper versus uh, AGP, uh, yeah, less cost, but more uh, rewards compared to uh, AGPs with uh, better performance. So in telebond uh, copper during uh, any challenges, a better uh, growth rate, FCR and lesion scores. So you are seen in all these uh, four uh, uh, different conditions, especially when each stress conditions, a better performance during uh, uh, all these challenging conditions, a better performance. And uh, we also have a recommendation in AMR uh, broiler program, uh, where we recommend uh, uh, in the starter diet, some zero to 10, uh, 200 PPM levels, which is equivalent to 370 grams and uh, or 0.37 kilo per metric ton. And the grower, it is uh, diets, it is uh, from day 11 to day uh, 25, we recommend 150 PPM levels of uh, uh, copper, uh, uh, hydroxy copper, so which is uh, uh, 0.28 uh, kilos per metric ton. So finisher diets, we uh, from day 26 to uh, 42 days or uh, rest of the life, we recommend 125 uh, uh, PPM levels and 0.23 uh, kilos or 230 grams per metric ton of feed. So this is um, our recommendation. Uh, so thank you for your listening uh, to my presentation. Now I'm happy to take a few questions. Shantal, the floor is yours. <laughs> thank you so much, Narendra, for your story. Um... Oh, we have uh, a few questions, so that's good. Um, feel free uh, to pop in your questions when uh, something uh, comes in mind. So we have time, so uh, uh, use uh, use the time to uh, ask us everything you need. Um, starting with the first one, um, that's from Lucy. What about the beneficial bacteria? How does copper act with these? Yeah, we have tested also with uh, probiotics. Uh, yeah, and, and also you've seen my data where uh, it has more action on E. coli and Clostridium. And uh, we have tested in the probiotics, uh, IntelliBond is uh, uh, performed uh, significantly higher uh, in the probiotics. There is no reduction much in the probiotics, uh, but uh, uh, especially in the good bacteria. Uh, and uh, yeah, especially in the copper, because it is uh, having uh, reactive nature, it is having more interactions and it has uh, it has more effect on the probiotics when we compared both both copper sulfate and intellibond which is which is uh, uh, copper sulfate has more effect than uh, intellibond so intellibond have very less effect on the probiotics and also you're seen in the salmonella we also in, it is not like acting in all the bacteria but only with specific bacteria like e coli and clostridium and there, there is some effect on the salmonella but not uh, we have seen a significant effect there Okay, thank you so much. Then Dan is asking a question. Does the level of copper in manure have any effect on bacterial content of soil when used as a fertilizer? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, when you talk about uh, uh, environmental uh, effect, uh, when you use copper sulfate, which will have uh, uh, more effect uh, uh, because you see that it is uh, going to bind also uh, a lot of antagonists. So one is uh, copper is also getting lost and at the same time, it also takes out phosphorus and other nutrients. But compared to uh, other, uh, uh, like it also depends on region to region, especially uh, because each region has different soil conditions. So that's why some markets are regulated like EU and all, which is more dense uh, land density. So where uh, uh, there is regulated and, but if you take other markets also, there are some deficiencies of copper. So it depends on market to market. That's why governments uh, make legis legislations on uh, based on that. So it is good sometimes it is, yeah, if there is high le level, so they, they li limit that. If I can also add to the answer to that question, there's, um, uh, there probably will be some Alice. sort of- Alice. Can, oh, you, can you just explain who you are so that people know? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> um, I've been uh, helping away in the chat box and the questions. Uh, so I've been uh, helping out here uh, today. I'm the program manager for Trace Minerals for Asia. Um, 
So there may be a negative impact on bacteria in the soils, uh, but I think if you compare, uh, basically it's all about the concentration of copper that you get in the in the feces and in the soil. So um, if you are using copper sulfate, more of the copper will be absorbed and less will be excreted. So your levels of copper in the soil will be low, much lower. Uh, whereas if you switch to a hydroxy trace mineral, such as Intellibond, uh, the bioavailability will be higher and the there will be less copper uh, excreted into the environment as well. So it also depends on uh, what you're comparing with as well. Thank you. Thanks, Alice. That's a, that's a good answer. Thank you. Uh, next one uh, is uh, Andras. I hope that I uh, pronounce his uh, name uh, correctly. Um, mentioned that uh, it's broad spectrum as well as its effect on uh, Clostridia, Salmonella, and coliforms. What about pre oh, I think you mentioned probiotics containing uh, bacilli. I think yeah, you already, we have, uh, yeah, that I one. already covered that. Yeah, uh, we have a study done on the probiotics and different uh, probiotic bacteria, uh, which is uh, IntelliBond is a much better uh, uh, stability on 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 probiotics uh, compared to uh, copper sulfate. So we can share that information uh, if you can share your details on that. Perfect. Okay, then a question from Adam. My question is regarding the toxicity. What is the maximum safe level of copper which can be used without any negative impact on performance? We have for better performance, uh, we tested, uh, I think you all your studies seen, uh, uh, we have uh, tested around uh, up to 250 ppm levels, uh, which is uh, uh, depending on challenge conditions. Uh, for growth performance, we have seen around uh, 125 ppm levels it is working or 250 ppm levels it is uh, working in the uh, challenge conditions. But um, as toxicity, uh, there is, uh, uh, as we also seen on the tolerance levels, especially in copper sulfate, due to uh, its reactive nature, it has uh, some uh, side effects as feed intake reduced. But when, when we increased, even I think in that study we have seen there, uh, when we increase even at 600 ppm levels also, there is not much impact on the a feed intake or a body weight uh, on, on when using IntelliBond levels. So we tested up to 500 to 600 ppm levels. So there is no uh, toxic or side effects on that. Great, thank you so much, Narendra. I'm just looking, I think we have covered all the questions for now, just why the verbally or in the uh, in the chat box. Um, so if there are questions still, uh, please uh, put them in. We still have a few minutes to go. Um, so I'm just keeping an eye on uh, on that while I'm, uh, I'm going to just uh, close this session uh, a little bit. Um, thank you all for uh, for attending. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I hope this was uh, of interest uh, to you. Um, just want to mention uh, that we have two more webinars to go in this uh, series of seven for our customers. Um, one is in December, so uh, it's a, about immunity, and the other one is especially for uh, feed millers. So if you can click to uh, the next slide, and people can see uh, Narendra. I'm just clicking it. Uh, uh, it's stuck. It's stuck. We'll try click it. It works now, yeah. Great. Um, so those are the, um, the, the, yeah, the next two that are still coming. Um, we had some previous sessions as mentioned, so if you are interested in those as well, uh, we have the recordings and the handout, so uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, to get uh, to get those. Um, I see there are no more questions popping in, so just going to wait just a few seconds, so. Take the floor if you still have some questions. You have the time now still. No, I think we are uh, are good to go, uh, Narendra. Um, if you have questions uh, popping in your head just uh, the coming days, then uh, just reach out and we will uh, be more than happy to, uh, to help you. So thank you again for uh, attending this webinar. Um, have a great day, stay safe. And Narendra, thank you so much for your presentation.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.